Skinner and Demulis in Richfield Springs and Turnbull Insurance Service since 1866 present Mohawk Valley Living, exploring the arts, culture, and heritage of our region. Today's show in memory of teacher and local legend, Bernadette Eichler. Good morning and welcome to Mohawk Valley Living. Today we are following the Shenango River. It begins in Morrisville and heads south some 90 miles and it feeds the main branch of the Susquehanna River. It is named after the Oneida word for bull thistle. So come along with us as we travel along this beautiful, beautiful river. There's no falling down, happy people all around, singing songs of Christmas cheer. Choir sang jingle bells, peace on earth to all is this holiday season, see Rented Christmas the Musical at the Illion Little Theater. It's the story of a middle-aged businessman who wants to rent a Christmas. Tickets are available at the door December 21st through 23rd and 28th through 30th at the Illion Little Theater on Remington Avenue in Illion. It's time for the Skinner and Demulis road trip. We stop into Richfield Springs where they have a full line of Jeeps, powerful Rams, and Ford trucks ready to take on any challenge. This week we take a trip along the Shenango River that starts in the Morrisville Swamp area. When we look even closer at the map, we notice one of the feeder streams south of Morrisville College is called the Electric Light Stream. We guess it must have been a source of power at some time. To find the answer, we visit Morrisville College. And who better to ask than the professor of renewable energy, Dr. Philip Hoffmeyer. Well, we have two different streams here. Um, one of them is on the Galbraith Farm, which is just north of campus, and on the campus property is the Electric Light Stream. And that started off as a woolen mill uh, in 1820s. And uh, it's been washed out three times since then. And it washed out the last time was uh, in the 1960s. And again, washed out, there went the, the hydroelectric system. It was at that point a 40-foot dam and washed away two or three homes down below it. And since that time, all that we see are the remnants of it. Uh, but there's an opportunity, I think, to be able to bring that system back online. If you're interested in hydro energy or small wind systems, you can take one of Dr. Hoffmeyer's classes this January. Call Morrisville State College at 1-800-258-0111. We continue to follow the Shenango River as it meanders south from the college. It eventually leads us to the tiny hamlet of Eaton. The town of Eaton was once the principal location of the Oneida tribe. Europeans began a settlement here in the 1790s, utilizing the river for grist mills and sawmills. The village was known for many years as Log City. Here we are traveling along the Shenango River and what do we come upon in the middle of Eaton but a lighthouse? And there isn't a body of water, there's not a lake, there's not an ocean for miles around, and there's this lighthouse. It was built over 80 years ago as an advertising gimmick, I guess, for the Colonial Beacon Oil Company, and now it's a post office. I am standing in front of a stately mansion that was built around 1800 by Joseph Morse, who was one of the founders of Eaton. Back then it was known, though, as Log City. Growing young, virgin tongue, all you saw was yet unsung. On a knee, he's with the bees. Let's go climb up that tree. Let's stay this, this way for the Shenango River was a critical link in the canal transportation system of the 1800s. We visit a much different mode of transportation at Eaton Aviation. This award-winning shop specializes in the restoration of small ragwing aircraft. Well, I retired from corporate flying 20 years ago and repaired a Piper Cub for myself for my own use. And that seemed to have pricked an interest in repairing fabric work and steel tube airplanes that 
not a lot of shops do today. To me, it's a passion. But we repaired an airplane, and before we had the airplane done, we had our first customer. And thinking I was going to be retired, that stopped because now there are not enough days in the week or hours in the day to to uh, keep up with what uh, what we really enjoy doing. Stay tuned for more along the Shenango River later in the show. Watch Mohawk Valley Living on Fox WFXV every Sunday at 7.30 a.m. and 11 o'clock p.m., followed by an encore. And now also available on WUTR every Sunday morning at 11.30 a.m. Here's what's hot on the lot at Skinner and Demulis. Drive the exciting new Dodge Dart for only $149 a month with a new 24-month lease. $29.99 cash or trade due at signing. Drive away in this exciting new technologically advanced compact sedan at Skinner and Demulis in Richfield Springs. You go the extra mile for your small business and should expect the same from your insurance company. For over 140 years, Turnbull Insurance Service has been committed to local small business. For your commercial coverage, turn to the company ready to go that extra mile. Turn to Turnbull. Visit Fenimore Art Museum in Cooperstown for Tasha Tudor around the year. With over a hundred outstanding examples of this beloved author and illustrator's original art. A heartwarming exhibit from the Norman Rockwell Museum, on view through December 31st. Sparkle this season with fashion from the Village Crossing. New sweaters, scarves, boots and accessories like American-made knit hats and soulmate socks. Stay warm and sparkle. Shop the Village Crossing in Clinton. Visit Trenton Teas, specializing in only premium quality teas, the finest varietal and herbal teas available. Visit Trenton Teas this holiday season for a special light lunch menu on Saturdays from 11 to 3. Come in and sample Teas of Distinction at Trenton Teas in downtown Utica. Where can you find fair trade local and organic gifts like Dean's Beans coffee, fresh bulk almonds and cashews, and hand-dipped candles and local pottery? Tom's Natural Foods in Clinton, naturally. Enter Cobbler & Company's Christmas Raffle to win a rocking horse that whinnies from Gund, a Melissa & Doug deluxe pirate ship, or a two-story wooden dollhouse. Tickets are $5 and benefit the Calibiate Park Fund in Sharon Springs. Shop the Little Falls Antique Center and the shops at 25 West with over 40 local vendors. Visit Wisteria Lane, featuring eco-friendly farmhouse laundry soap. Check out the fashion-forward recycled vintage clothing at We Wear Vintage. Stock up on the season's jams and jellies at Homespun Memories and explore the ever-changing antiques at the new vendors upstairs. Shop local at the Little Falls Antique Center and the shops at 25 West at Canal Place in Little Falls. There's no falling down Happy people all around Singing songs of Christmas cheer Choir sing jingle bells, peace on earth to all is well. Knowing Santa's almost here. The Mohawk Valley Center for the Arts in Little Falls presents Local Arts. We're here north of Palatine Bridge at Denise Allen's studio. We first met Denise probably about six or seven years ago. She was one of our first artists, actually, and we wanted to see what she was up to. She's from New York City, but she found her dreams led her here to the country. She's actually living on a farm here in upstate New York. Let's go see what she's up to. Denise is a folk artist who creates 3D folk art story quilts and 19th century folk art dolls. She sews the old-fashioned way, by hand or using an antique foot treadle sewing machine. People who view her art seem to sense the tradition. I don't try to get them to see anything because really what I'm creating is really coming from my heart and my soul. And I'm not creating it to get them to think a certain thing. But the good thing is the people that look at my artwork, they tell me what they see. I'm, I guess maybe I'm kind of fortunate in that way. Uh, people say, Miss, there's something about your artwork. And these are people that are not African American. These are people from, um, you know, uh, white people, Spanish people, Chinese people, Puerto Ricans, all different types of people from, you know, global 
uh, around the world. They all seem to be affected by the images. They, they mostly say they see a lot of love and warmth in uh, the images. They see life, uh, what it was like for them growing up. Uh, and so even though the images are uh, black images, uh, it's still global because family is global. Love is global, has nothing to do with color. Well, it's in my soul, it's a calling, okay? Uh, like I said, from the time I was a little girl, I would dream about these images, and I feel like it was the good Lord that put this into my DNA to let me know that one day I was going to be an artist. Again, I didn't understand that when I was little, but it wasn't, wasn't until I became in my 20s that I started doing all of this artwork, and the people got such a good response from it. I just happened to get a call from the Cajona Museum, and they want me to come and do a, a workshop and a talk about my artwork. And that's one of the things actually that keeps me going because the people seem to really enjoy it. And it's not just about art for art's sake. They get something uh, from it. They feel good about my art. I'm not trying to make them feel good. So it motivates me to want to just keep going. Plus, it's a passion. I just love it. I love old fashioned cloth. I love antiques. I love old sewing machines. It's just in my blood. I. I, I'll just do this and do this and do this until I can't do it anymore. I love it. Yeah. You can see Denise Allen's work on display the month of February at Brotherhood Antiques at 41 Church Street in Canajoharie. And visit her online at deniseeallen.com. Christmas trees trim it's that time of year again when people who celebrate Christmas are decorating for the holiday. But do you know where the traditions come from? Fountain Elms in Utica is decorated like a home in the late 1800s. And you'll learn many of the origins of these holiday traditions. In the dining room, we're set up for a beautiful Christmas Day dinner with holly dishes that belong to the Proctor family. You'll see some interesting specialized glassware and uh, eating utensils in that room, we have celery containers. Of course, to us, celery, we think of just go to the grocery store and get it. But back in the 1800s, it would be a treat because of lack of refrigeration. In the middle of the table, we are decorated with pineapples. Also, fresh fruit would be a very um, wonderful treat for people to have because of the lack of refrigeration. Also, pineapples are a symbol of hospitality, and that goes back to colonial times. We have also some more traditions represented in the library. We have mistletoe, we have stockings. Stockings come to us from Holland. And that's a tradition that goes back to St. Nicholas, who helped a poor family. And come and hear the details about that interesting story. And the uh, floral decoration in the bedroom is poinsettias. Guess what? They're from Mexico. Come and hear about the story of the poinsettias. So come on down to Fountain Elms and find out about a lot of Christmas traditions. We are decorated for a Victorian Christmas from about 1870 to 1900. Some of the things you'll find out about are not that old, they come from the 1800s. But other traditions that come from other countries are hundreds of years old. The Fountain Elms Victorian Yuletide is free and open to the public, Tuesday through Saturday 10 to 5 and Sunday 1 to 5, with guided docent tours Saturdays at 2. It is located next door to Munson Williams Proctor at 310 Genesee Street in Utica. In 1866, James B. Turnbull walked to farms and villages to visit his customers, earning their trust. Today, the fourth generation of Turnbulls continue that dedication, tailoring a life insurance plan to suit your unique needs and priorities. Turn to the company that is out there to earn your trust. Turn to Turnbull. Now you can take out hot specials for lunch and dinner at Maria's Pasta Shop and on Sundays, fried dough, fried meatballs, and fresh baked rolls. Maria's Pasta Shop, Oneida Street, Utica. 
For centuries, Sharon Springs has been a destination for replenishing body and spirit. Discover the magic yourself. Enjoy dining at fabulous cafes and restaurants. Browse quaint shops and meet skilled artisans. Explore the history and magic of Sharon Springs on scenic routes 10 and 20. Hi, Dr. Tom. Bringing your cat to the Paris Hill Cat Hospital on Sundays is a part of Mohawk Valley Living. Come inside and see why. Paris Hill Cat Hospital, this is Lindsay. How can I help you? Hello, Mrs. Cole. Your cat is losing weight and you need an appointment? And you're only available on weekends. Sure, I have an available appointment with Dr. Karen Sunday at 2 p.m. Does that fit into your schedule? Okay. We are open seven days a week because we know that your cat can become ill anytime. The Paris Hill Cat Hospital, quality care for your cats and kittens. Shop Shelter for handmade Adirondack furniture designed by craftsman Jim Kiefer. He works with you to create custom pieces to your specifications, from dining room and coffee tables to bookcases, beds, and bunks. Call or visit Shelter on Main Street in Old Forge. Meelan's Market is your holiday meat headquarters, featuring low-salt, low-fat smoked ham and store-made kielbasa. Try their famous crown roast of pork or prime rib, and be sure to pre-order your fresh seafood and shrimp platters. Meelan's Market, at the Four Corners in Clark Mills. Discover the gems of the region at Gems Along the Mohawk, 70 legacies under one roof. Shop local sports teams, colleges, farms, manufacturers, and Herkimer Diamond Mines with jewelry from around the world. Or give a gift certificate to a local attraction. In celebration of Gem's 10th anniversary, spend $20.12 and be automatically entered to win a $1,000 holiday shopping spree. Share the area's gems with everyone on your shopping list at Gems Along the Mohawk, Thruway Exit 30 in Herkimer. Special thanks to Turnbull Insurance Service and Mark and Jim Turnbull. Their continued support makes the show possible. <laughs> Running parallel to the Shenango River was the Shenango Canal that ran from Utica to Binghamton. It passed through the middle of nearby Hamilton, and we hear there's a new brewery in town. Good Nature Brewing is operated by a young couple determined to craft their beer using locally grown ingredients. Matt has a, a natural, almost a natural talent for brewing. He's not professionally trained. He's actually a chef by trade, um, but he started as a home brewer almost a decade ago. Um, so for him, this is a dream come true. And for me, part of the reason that I wanted to get into this and we've built the whole business around this is I wanted to use the business as a vehicle for supporting our agricultural economy around here. So we primarily, you know, to the extent that we can supply willing, we source our hops locally and our malted barley, at least from within the state. Uh, it's, it's not easy, but that's, that's kind of the mission behind what we do. When it comes to beer, my favorite is stout and the darker, the better. This is called Imperial Chocolate Stout, so I'm sure I'm going to like it. And if you notice the bottle, uh, the top has a cork in it, very much like champagne, so it clearly is a champagne of beer, correct? Good Nature Brewing is located at 37 Milford Street in Hamilton and is open for tastings Tuesday through Thursday, noon to 6, and Friday and Saturday, noon to 7, with tours by appointment. There are scheduled tours every Saturday on the hour. Just down the block from the brewery is where the old O&W Railroad used to run. Back in 1955, there was a train wreck at this location. The train happened to be carrying some chocolate, and chocolate flew all over the place. So the children from all around came here to gather up the chocolate. And fortunately, nobody was killed. It did kill chocolate sales for quite some time. In fact, they celebrate every year at the end of September with the Great Chocolate Wreck Festival. Mm, good chocolate. Mm. Don't ruin your appetite, Richard. It's time for lunch. We head to Broad Street in Hamilton to La Iguana Mexican Restaurant. It is owned by a young Brazilian couple and is a popular destination for authentic Mexican favorites. We went south of the border here in Hamilton to La Iguana, and let me tell you, if you like Mexican food, get down here because it was mucho delici no, muy, deliciano. muy deliciano. No, delicioso. Delicioso. 
whatever. It is delicious. We are both Brazilian. We are both Brazilians who came to the States to study and then, you know, ended up having the opportunity to go to college here, change our visas and move here. And uh, it's been a really fun experience. It's been completely an interesting story was, I swear I would never work in a restaurant after my first uh, restaurant job and I absolutely hated waiting tables. So I was a hostess, I've done a lot of other things, but I said, no way. Then I married a chef and that was all over with. Visit La Iguana tonight and Mohawk Valley Living fans receive a free appetizer for your table or enjoy a delicious dessert like churros. La Iguana is located at 10 Broad Street in Hamilton and is open for lunch and dinner Tuesday through Saturday and Sunday for dinner 4 to 8.45. To see what we can see. We head out of the village to the rural homestead of the imaginary farmer. We have featured a few mushroom farms over the years, and if there's a little farmer in you, you might want to try to grow some of your own mushrooms. Scientist Owen Tallman has developed innovative mushroom growing kits using locally and regionally produced materials from the farm and the Shenango River Valley. You can enjoy growing and eating your own mushrooms. Call 520-3989 or visit theimaginaryfarmer.com. We head back to the Shenango River and follow it south through Randallsville and Middleport. It picks up the Sangerfield River just south of Earlville. Here, where the two rivers combine, we find Dreamweaver creations. If you ever wondered where all the fiber goes from the area's sheep and alpaca farms, much of it ends up here at this fiber processing mill, where it is washed, carded, and spun. You can visit the mill and store at 384 Williams Road in Sherburn. The Shenango River takes us to the village of Sherburn, and now we have to let it go. From here, it continues its long journey to Binghamton to become part of the great Susquehanna. Here's what's hot on the lot. It's truck month at Skinner and Demulis. Check out the great selection of bold new Rams and Ford trucks. Come take one of these exciting new machines out for a test drive. You'll be prepared for anything in your new truck from Skinner and Demulis in Richfield Springs. Shop Clinton Wine and Spirits, a small town wine shop with a world of wine. An excellent variety of Cabernet, Merlot, Chardonnay, Pinot Noir, and Pinot Grigio from around New York and around the world. All at Clinton Wine and Spirits, Hannaford Plaza in Clinton. Expecting company? Just call Deansboro Superette. They prepare delicious Middle Eastern platters for any number of guests. Call 841-4377. If you're in a collision, you need Precision. Call your insurance company first and then choose Precision Unlimited, providing expert auto body collision repair since 1987 on Route 5 in Clinton. Oscar's Picture Framing is ready to help you with your personalized gift this holiday season. Restore an antique frame or create a new one for your family portrait or child's artwork. Oscar's, Kellogg Road, New Hartford. Fresh cut Mohawk Valley wheatgrass, now available at Tom's Natural Foods in Clinton. Allie Lynn's Home and Accessories for Distinctive Gifts. For the Tasteful. For the Holidays. For American Made. Allie Lynn's Home and Accessories, West Park Row in Clinton. Celebrate the season at North Star Orchards with poinsettias, wreaths, garland, and Christmas trees, and stocking stuffer candy, citrus, holiday gifts, and baked goods. You'll also find gift baskets perfect for giving in person or shipped anywhere from North Star Orchards in Westmoreland. Affordable beginner instruments at Big Apple Music, New Hartford. Shop the new Paca Gardens for the finest alpaca products. Luxuriously warm hats, mittens, sweaters, socks, and rugs. Five times warmer than wool, lighter, and hypoallergenic. Paca Gardens across from Fall Hill Beat and Gem on West Main Street in Little Falls. 
Tis the season to visit Bleecker Street in East Utica and our friends at Cafe Caruso. The store's windows sparkle with colorful holiday decorations. And if you had a Roma television, you'd be down here quicker than I can say pit, pit and cu pits and cues. It's busy, thank God, it's busy. We do, right now we're doing the pits and cues, which are the, well, Michael will explain it to you later. We did the honey balls the other day, which are the little pinolatas our little delicacy that's a, a traditional Italian Christmas dessert. And our cookies and pastries are pretty basic. We don't change that a lot during the holidays, but the volume changes. And the younger people are starting. The, the, the offspring of our original customers and the grandchildren, luckily they know that this is something that you can't get anyplace else. So they come back for the holidays because their families are still here. So it's kind of nice. We're seeing a whole nother generation and because we're on the internet and that's a whole nother market. So we're, we're good. We're, you know, we're trying. We're trying to keep up. <laughs> this particular dessert, um, I've, I've been doing it for about 31 years. Um, it's, I have to make the dough the day before because it has to set. Um, you can't make it and use it, you know, the, the same day. Um, and then the next day, put honey, nuts, raisins, um, cinnamon. You have to roll them, uh, and you have to make sure you don't roll them too tight uh, because when you put the honey on, <clears throat> after you take them out of the oven, it won't penetrate the, uh, the pastry. It's only Christmas time. Um, it's popular. I think that they're, they're awesome. Nuts, honey, and raisins. How could you go wrong? If you've been inspired to try and bake some pizza and cues yourself at home and have some extra time on your hands, Carmela has shared their old Italian recipe, which is very rarely written down. You can visit our website or send a self-addressed stamped envelope to 30 Kellogg Street in Clinton. 100 years ago, when you're stocking, if you got a pomegranate, some oranges, maybe a few apples, nuts, you thought you were really fortunate. And once in a while, there'd be a piece of candy in it. Now we we throw we stuff them with candy, a little fruit as a tradition of what it was a hundred years ago. Another Christmas tradition always was to have a bowl of nuts, whether they were mixed or whether people liked specific. Typically, walnuts were used for cooking as well as just eating. But it's good to gather the family and just crack nuts. We hope that you enjoyed our trip today along the Shenango River uh, all the way to Sherburn. We have to leave it there, but the river itself continues all the way south to the Susquehanna, and then it flows into the Chesapeake Bay. Tune in next week for more adventures in the Mohawk Valley, and between now and then, enjoy Mohawk Valley living. Honey, honey, I